Hello, Nintendo Wii here. Welcome back to Retro Break. I'm very excited to show you guys in this episode my first ever Commodore 64. So I got it the other day from someone at work who said it had been sitting in his garage for the past 20 years. It's really incredible that it actually still works at all. I wasn't really expecting it to. So I was very, very excited to get it. Along with the computer, it also came with two joysticks. Unfortunately, neither of these seem to work or maybe they just need something fixing on the inside. So I did a bit of research online and you can actually use a Sega Master System controller plugged into the control port on there and it works absolutely fine. Apparently there's a few problems with using a Mega Drive controller so make sure it's a Master System one unless you want to risk damaging the computer. Also in the box came a keyboard which is kind of clever because as you can see there there's the Commodore keys and the keyboard literally sits on the top of the keyboard um, and there it is inside. I haven't actually tried it out yet but I'll definitely give it a go and show it in the video so very cool to have that. And a few other little bits and pieces that it came with, it came with this art program called the Designer's Pencil, which seems really confusing to use, it actually seems to be more of a programming tool than a drawing tool, so it's a bit odd that one. Um, but it is made by Activision, which is kind of interesting. And the other thing it came with is this sort of storybook on tape where you can sort of read along with it. The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, which I'm not too interested in. And unfortunately it didn't actually come with any games, so of course I went straight to eBay and picked up a few games that I'd be interested in seeing how they play on the Commodore 64. Before I start showing you the games that I've picked up and my impressions of them, I just want to ask if you guys have any recommendations for the Commodore 64, please leave them in the comments below. I'm trying to make a big list of all the games that I should try out for the system. I'm very very excited to have one if you haven't gathered already, so please leave your suggestions down below. Now let's get started by first taking a look at Chucky Egg 2. So the first game we're looking at here is Chucky Egg 2. I actually picked this one up for a very good reason and that is that my dad and my uncle used to play the original Chucky Egg on their ZX Spectrum and there's a pretty funny story to go along with that. Apparently my uncle got really annoyed one day and actually broke the cassette tape for Chucky Egg and we always bring that up every time we see him so I finally got Chucky Egg. It's not the original that I was hoping, it's actually a very different game. This one actually seems like quite a big adventure sort of game. As you can see here, you go through lots of different um, areas during the game. And this one particular bit made me laugh. You have to try and get past a dog by uh, going through the dog kennel. You have to pick up a bone and then carry it all the way back. So it seems like a fairly interesting game. The controls are kind of clunky, but they're basically what you'd expect from a game of this era. Overall though, I'm pretty impressed with it. It seems kind of fun. The second game we're looking at here is called Salamander. This game actually came out in the arcades and it was ported to a lot of different consoles and computers at the time. So I was very interested to see how the Commodore 64 version stacks up. Unfortunately, this game had a lot of trouble while I was trying to load it and I've only actually got it to work twice so far. So I don't really have a lot of gameplay to show you, mostly just blue screens and error messages. But when it finally started and I was finally able to actually play some of it, I was very surprised. It has very smooth scrolling, it has great music, really cool sounding sound effects as well. The gameplay plays exactly as you would expect. Unfortunately, the Master System controller doesn't have the best D-pad, so I did sort of mess up occasionally, but still really impressed with this one. Definitely one to check out if you've got a Commodore 64. The third game we have here is Power Drift. And I got this one because I was very curious to see how such a good Sega arcade game could possibly convert to an 8-bit system. I have to say, what they've managed to pull off with the Commodore 64 is amazing. I didn't even realise it was possible for the C64 to do the sort of sprite scaling effect that the arcade machine actually had. So very, very impressed by this and it also has a really cool, really good soundtrack as well. Something that I've actually noticed with quite a lot of the other games that I've played so far is the actual sound quality from the system is really good. The gameplay actually also holds up pretty well too, so very happy with this purchase. Yeah. 
And this game here is Bomb Jack 2. I used to love playing the original Bomb Jack on the NES, so I thought this one would be kind of similar. I was completely mistaken, this game's almost entirely different. Instead of jumping around and collecting the bombs, you actually move between different platforms, and I can't quite figure out how you're supposed to kill the enemies. I just seem to bump into them and sometimes they die and sometimes I die. But the main premise of Bomb Jack remains the same, and that is to pick up all the items and you get a sort of special bonus if you manage to pick them up in the correct order. I've never actually managed to get past screen 2, so I don't have a lot to show you from this game, and I'm kind of disappointed that it doesn't really play anything like the original Bomb Jack, which is one of my favourite arcade games for the time. And now the one I'm sure you've all been waiting to see, and one that I was kind of interested to try out even though I know I'll probably never use it again, and that was the Commodore Music Keyboard. It has a very basic program that comes pre-installed with it. Basically, you can only press one key at a time, which is a bit strange, so you can't really do any chords or anything like that, not that I really know how to play the piano. But there was a few other interesting bits to play around with, there's a sort of beat generator, um, there's also a voice synthesizer, which I couldn't quite get working, and it did come with a book of music for you to follow and a few sort of tutorial training lessons as well, so I can see at the time why it, why it would have been a good thing to get, but these days there's way better options out there, you're probably better off just buying a MIDI keyboard. So thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Commodore 64 and some of my first impressions of the system. Obviously it came out way before I was born so going back and playing some of these games has been kind of difficult for me but I'm definitely willing to give it a go because I know just how important it was to gaming as a whole, here in the UK at least, it was huge. I'd also really love to get a ZX Spectrum as well, that was a sort of competitor to the Commodore 64 at the time and it also has some amazing games for it. So thank you so much for watching, if you want to pledge on Patreon there's a link in the description. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter at NintendoWii and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.